Since the beginning of recorded time, humans have been getting smarter. Galileo handed the torch to Newton, who handed it to Einstein, who handed it to Stephen Hawking, who handed it to Beetlejuice Green. Carrot, I think it's a... I think it's a... I think it's a carrot. But in CK3, it's a different story. Whenever I have a fantastic character, my son always looks like this. Carrot, I think it's a... Oh, uh, I don't know about carrots. I don't know nothing about that. And today, I'm on a mission to change that. Today, I'm on a mission to make the smartest human ever in CK3. So come join me on this epic journey. Hello, Ottawans and Ottawans from around the globe. So to achieve our goals for today, we'll be playing as a descendant of Jarl Halfdan, a white shirt of Jorovic. You see, he's got this bastard son who lives in a relatively unknown county just south of Chernobyl. Maybe you've heard of it before. Now you see this holder of this definitely not overpowered county is Jarl Dyer the Stranger. Now in real life, this man was big brained. So in the game, he starts with the genius trait. So naturally we'll be using him to make our smartest human in the world. So my wife here to start off, she's not awesome. So let's go ahead and divorce her. Bye bye. And pick up a brand new wife. Okay, so it looks like we have this genius, this 27 year old genius, or we have this beautiful woman. So I have two options. I can either pretty much guarantee myself a genius or try and gamble a bit and try and get two solid traits in my air. I think what I'm gonna do is pick up the genius trait. That way we're almost guaranteed a genius child. Hello there. So I know exactly what you're thinking. Sure, you're gonna have a genius, but that's not gonna make him the smartest person in the world. And you're right. How are we gonna do that exactly? Well, we're gonna use the acronym WEAT. It stands for Wealth, Hereditary Traits, Education, Artifacts, and Territories, strategically taken. So as a result, we gotta have a good motto for our house. Gotta yeet that wheat. All the five elements are really important, but the most important are wealth and territories. And before we get to killing our neighbors, let me explain why. Now, playing tall and becoming extremely wealthy goes hand in hand with being the smartest person ever. Your intelligence and the development of your culture have a direct impact on how fast you're able to research technologies and unlock new buildings, traits, and units. It's pronounced mot, not moat, you idiot. This is why all game, you'll see me use my steward to develop my counties. You can take these technologies you've unlocked and use them to construct buildings that'll bring in revenue, massive amounts of troops, improvements to your men at arms. You can become incredibly powerful like this. And the more powerful you are, well, you can pretty much take any territory you want. Now, there are some strategic territories I guarantee you don't know of that can multiply the amount of learning your character has. Okay, that's enough explanation. Let's get killing. Oh boy, here I go killing again. So he starts with 2,800 troops and he's next to a lot of weak people. So I'm gonna war these guys one at a time, rush the capital, and that'll be it. And we're gonna grind our way to a kingdom tier where things are really gonna get interesting. So I'm also going to reset my perks and make sure I'm going up this middle tree here, the August tree, so I can max out my prestige in this first life. So if you take a look at the culture screen, our territory is currently of the Russian culture. Now this is not what we want at all, because Jarl Dyer here is a descendant of a Norseman and is thus of the Norse culture. So I'm going to pick up my Stuart here, and he's going to promote the county right here to be of my culture. And this is going to be incredibly important to snowball us way ahead in this game when we diverge our culture. But we'll talk about that in just a minute. One of the other things I'm going to do is make sure that I have host feast and call hunt on notify me as soon as it becomes available. Because I want to be trading my gold for the maximum amount of prestige possible. Okay, so it looks like my wife has had a son. Let's take a look at him. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Right away we got a genius. Oh, look how big brain this guy is. Actually, I had another name in mind. You guessed it. And his name is John! Oh, baby. And you know who else has a big brain? All the people that have already subscribed. Because, you know, when this channel is absolutely massive, they're going to be able to tell all their friends they were subscribed under 20,000, which is coincidentally our goal for the end of this month. So we have the decision available to raise a rune stone. I'm going to do that because it essentially converts 50 gold into 350 prestige. So I'm going to try and manage my succession a little bit. I'm going to break up with my lover, my wife, and I'll also divorce her. Then I'll be uh, betrothed to somebody very, very young. So I shouldn't really be having many more kids, to be honest with you. FBI, open up! As I mentioned, I'm also going to try to befriend my steward so that he can increase development later at a quicker rate. 
All right, so a little while has passed and we've grabbed a whole bunch more territories. I've also gone ahead and taken my son here, John, and made sure that I'm his educator. Here's the lowdown on how education typically works. There's a big convoluted calculation, but all you really need to know are the following points to make a great decision. At a young age, your child is randomly assigned a trait, which will determine what trees they prefer to go down. You'll see here, John wants to go down either the diplomacy tree or the learning tree. If you pick one they prefer to go down, the chance of your education turning out better and the kids having better stats is increased. Having an intellectual trait in the child or the guardian also increases the education stat. So the fact that my son is a genius and I'm educating him and I'm a genius, well that's huge. And finally, this complex calculation factors in the skill level of the guardian. It takes the learning skill plus double of the skill you're trying to educate into your child. So say I wanted to put John down diplomacy, for example, it would double the diplomacy and add that to my learning and it would factor that number into the calculation. Obviously, bigger is better. I'm also going to pick up the court tutor because this improves our education outcomes. Now I don't have too many good people here. I have this one lady who's just good, so that's not bad. This one lady who's just good, so that's not bad. This just in breaking news. Good is not bad. You heard it here first. Oh my god, what am I doing in my life? <laughs> Also, after taking all this land, we have a couple decisions for us. Namely, we can found the capital city of Rus. Now, this decision is absolutely overpowered. Not only does it increase our popular opinion, but it increases our development growth by one per month. That's huge at this stage in the game. Because the average development of your culture has an insane impact on how fast you research new technologies. And with this capital city, we make Kiev, or Kiev. I don't know, I hear so much news and everybody pronounces it different, um, but it will make a fine capital nonetheless. And if you take a look at our development now, we're slightly less red. You're gonna see this explode pretty soon. The other thing we can do is start using our gold to create some duchies, and this should amplify my prestige. And we can also create the kingdom of Galatia Volhynia. Oh my god, I'm gonna get so roasted for these. So now I'm gonna chill, reinvest in my counties a little bit. Realistically, I'm going to save up my prestige here so that I can diverge my culture. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, so we've saved up about 5,100 prestige, which is perfect. What I'm gonna do is come over here to my culture and diverge it and make a new culture. I'm gonna go with a bureaucratic culture. Not only will this increase our lifestyle experience, but also our development growth. In terms of our traditions, I'm gonna change out Ting Meat for Expert Artisans. And what this will allow me to do is reduce the cost of my building construction. So we'll spend the 4,500 prestige and create a new culture. Of course, we need a good name. Perfect. Well, so now if you look at our culture, we have our one county here that is of the big brain culture, which means the average development of counties with our culture is quite high. And I am the cultural head, so I get to choose what we're researching next. Right away, I want to pick up public works so that we can max out our existing development at 20. I am down the wealth focus, and I'm going to pick up centralization here, which will increase my development growth in my realm capital, which is perfect, exactly what we want. I'm going to head over to the learning lifestyle, grab the scholarship focus to increase my development by a percentage, and grab the scientific perk, which will increase my cultural fascination progress. One of the other things I'm going to do is commission an artifact. I'm going to commission a book because it has the highest probability of being something that will increase my learning. And if not, at the very least, it'll increase the speed at which I go down the lifestyle tree. Knowledge. What? Oh no! John, how could you die? Died from his internal injuries. What was wrong with him? Oh, he was maimed. Oh my days, but we have a grandson who is shit also, that's good. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. This game always kills my good errors. Every game, I am like 93% sure that's in the code somewhere. Like, I, I'm so sure of it, it's not even funny. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is break the betrothal with this lady. We can uh, hook up with this Russian lady. She's a genius, so in two years we can start having kids with this lady. That's actually not a bad show. Hello there. All right, and our inspiration was realized. Oh, perfect! Not only does this book give us a little bit of prestige, but it also increases our learning lifestyle by 5%. 
which is awesome. I am quite impressed and I do love to see it. Okay, and my new wife's bore me a child. He looks a little bit dopey. Let's take a look. Oh, and it's another genius. genius. Hell yeah, dude. And his name is Better John. Ah, uh, much better. So I'm going to use some of the prestige I've been saving up and invest in my men at arms. I'm gonna pick up some Varanian veterans. Anybody that watches my videos will know I love them. They're heavy infantry units and they're absolute beasts. Okay, and let's just pick up a few more of these guys. Perfect. We're trying to make our way up to adopt feudal ways. We'll need to convert our religion at some point and make sure we have 70% of all military and civic tribal era innovation. So part of my plan for this game is to hold strategic territory. And in total, I'm gonna try and pick up at least five of these strategic territories to boost my learning to insane levels. Now, part of this plan is to grab East Anglia. I know, crazy far away, but it'll all make sense in just a second because Cambridge over here is actually a university. So I'm gonna kind of island hop. I'm gonna take out somebody that's weak up here and then race over to East Anglia and grab it. Okay, and I had to call some allies in, but we did end up taking East Anglia so we can enforce these demands now. <laughs> Perfect. And now Cambridge is officially ours. Awesome. So in order to execute the decision to found a university, you need to have a development equal to 40 or greater. And if we take a look at the development screen, the development here is actually terrible. Are you fucking dumb? One of the things I'm going to do for this is make sure that in our cities, our guild halls are max development. So they always give a plus 5% bonus. So we can always upgrade these to increase the development of okay so we have a ton of piety and we're in pretty good shape as it stands i think what i'm going to do is convert to catholicism uh, now this will only cost me 250 piety total but the reason i'm going to do this is very simple when i'm ready to adopt feudal ways catholicism is already an organized faith so i don't have to stress about that Okay, uh, so we've died. We're now playing as King Better John, our son. Good 14 year old. Not a bad shout at all. Let's find somebody good to educate him. I'm looking at this quarter. He's a genius. Uh, he's got 18 learning and 18 stewardship, so that should be good. He's, uh, he's pretty half decent, this guy, so let's lock him in. So one of the first dynasty legacies I'm going to pick up is Kin, so that we can eventually grab studious youth where our dynasty members get better education traits oh and we've come of age and finally we picked up mastermind philosopher giving us a plus eight to our learning lifestyle that is actually sick dude we'll be able to fly up the learning lifestyle tree we've actually saved up enough piety and gold to be able to found a holy order that's actually clutch so let's go ahead and do that what the heck my vassal here just took all of this territory uh oh i can actually create the kingdom let's go ahead and do that that is a free 400 prestige and with all that prestige what i'm gonna do is just bolster the size of my men-at-arms units all right so finally the time's come we have the option to adopt feudal ways so we've got an absolute tribal authority catholicism is organized we're distinguished we have great development and 70 percent of the tribal era innovation so let's go ahead and lock this in feudalism so our troops decreased significantly and our gold per month decreased significantly. Now, as soon as we start researching some more, we'll be able to dump gold into our lands and really make small, small numbers of counties super powerful. Okay, so just looking over here at my vassal, he's taken all this land for me. He's actually a beast. And you know what? Like, I don't need any of this land and I would much rather have the renowned anyways. You get renowned for basically each independent ruler that's part of your dynasty. So this guy's part of my Chernobyl dynasty. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll just grant him this title. So he can grow on his own. I'll get increased prestige and, and we should be all good there. He's strong enough that he can kind of support himself and uh, kind of not get taken over by Kazaria, I think. Uh, especially if I can negotiate an alliance with him. So our culture just discovered Mots here. Wow, it only took you 10 CK3 videos and a billion comments to figure that one out. And that will allow us to construct holdings in our current area and we can construct castles, which are going to be incredibly important for us. Now, remember how I said this county was overpowered? Well, in addition to all the extra castle holdings we're building, I'm also going to pick up the special building in it, the Golden Gate of Kiev. 
It's going to give me an additional 10% taxes, increase 10% bonus, and give me a 0.1 development growth boost per month. Not to mention a boost to my piety and prestige, fort level, defender advantage. Oh, this is an absolutely crazy special building. Now, just taking a look, we're currently sitting at 29 development in this county, which is kind of insane for 965, considering the only thing I've done is taken my steward and placed them onto increasing development in that one county. So I'm currently researching communal government, which will essentially allow me to increase my development up to 35 and not take any penalties. So just looking at my sons here, my primary heir, Prince Better John II, the rise of John Better Johnson. He's okay, but like, you know, he's getting kind of old. I'm going to disinherit him. I don't really need him. The reason being is because my son here is actually looking pretty good. He's charming, content, just, and cynical. And not only that, he's a genius. I think he's going to be a better option to play as in our next life. I think he'll bring us further. Another thing I completely and totally forgot to do is I'm going to change my court type away from a tribal court to an administrative court, which will give me all these bonuses to building construction time and development, things like that. I completely forgot to do this and definitely should have done it a long time ago. And our son is coming of age and he gains the trait astute intellectual, which is not great or terrible. So I've been saving up my gold and now I think I'm going to start bolstering my army a little bit. I have all these Varanian veterans that I've made and they're all maxed out. I think the next things I'm going to buy are these onagers. And I think uh, just picking up maybe two sets of onagers and maxing those out will help me improve my army a little bit. <clears throat> all right, so we've died. Now we're playing as our son. Perfect. So I can see that there's a uh, Liberty faction that's going to make a demand for me. Essentially, all the Liberty faction is, is they want to lower my crown authority to high crown authority, uh, which is totally fine by me. You know, I'll lose some feudal tax contributions and things like that, but that's fine. Just until we can kind of uh, gain a better foothold, gain more men and become stronger. And just taking a look at our development now, it is absolutely bananas in our capital. We have a uh, monthly growth of two, which is absolutely absolutely nuts and over here in Cambridge if you take a look at the development as well we're getting up there we're at 21 I'm currently in the process of promoting our culture here once the culture is promoted I'll be able to construct new cities and in the cities I can make guilds so now that we've converted Cambridge to our culture we're able to construct new holdings in it so it was definitely a mistake to give that land away to my house member. It's fractured away and been taken over so many times by now. So uh, yeah, mistakes were made, but uh, we're learning. We're learning. So over here in my temple, I'm going to be building up the trade port, which also increases development growth. So you can see the monthly development growth over here is 3.1 because of all the buildings we've been building, which is pretty good. So I've just been going around chugging my money into my counties and they're pulling out big time. Look at this county, 8.9 return, 4.1 over here, and I'm not even done. Anytime I get any money from anywhere, whether I'm asking the Pope for money or holy orders are trying to lease out cities in exchange for gold, I chug it right back into my counties and my holdings. All right, so here's where it gets super interesting. If you take a look at us right now, we only have 34 learning, which is kind of pathetic, but we've set ourselves up perfectly to be able to multiply this to 100. We've been patient, played tall, and now we're incredibly powerful. We made sure we had genius children, we educated them properly, we got artifacts to help with our learning, Knowledge. and now it's time for all that hard work to pay off. So come join me as I use an absolutely massive and elite army and a huge amount of gold to completely and totally steamroll my neighbors and take strategic territory that will multiply my learning. And I'm releasing episode two as the next video on my channel. So make sure you've hit subscribe and like so that you get notified when that one comes out. And if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. It's the king of all kings, the one of a ball pulling strings. If you want a war, then you take you a swing at us. But yeah, you'll be the one to crack like a piñata. This woman all in my gold like I don't want lottos. No, I ain't being out of bad dude. We can take her to the field and proceed to win the battle. Take the mantle, horses getting straddled. Hey, it's a king's crusade. It's a king's crusade. I'm living my life.